These ducks are damn good. These ducks were damn dominant uh, today in a difficult place to play. Welcome to the Voice of College Football, breaking down the game we all love each and every day with you. Best discussion, debate, and analysis. Oregon 35, Utah 6. Who saw this coming? Not me. I did pick the ducks to win. Man, they were good. They were good. Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, please like the video, share the videos out on social media, and subscribe right here at the Voice of College Football. Outside of a Bucky Irving fumble on the second or third drive of the game, Oregon could not be stopped early in the game when it really mattered. Their first three drives went 75, 75, and 30, all for a touchdown to take a 21-3 lead. They stuffed Utah on a fourth and one to stop the Utes on downs, the first drive of the ball game for the Utes. And then they uh, also stuffed Utah on a seven-play 13-yard drive, if that's what you want to call it, after the fumble by Irving put Utah in a great position, only down 7 nothing, still in the game. Rice Eccles still rocking, thinking that after giving up a touchdown, they get right back in the ball game. But... The Ducks defense stopped him right there and forced a field goal to make it 7-3. to Taishim Johnson had two interceptions. The first one was a thing of beauty if you love defensive back play. Because in not pass interfering with the wide receiver, he was able to cross past him and pluck the football out of the air while engaged with the wide receiver and dove to the ground and made a diving catch. Just... Perfect anticipation, avoided contact for the most part, uh, broke on the football, burst, hands, and contact with the ground and still maintain possession. Taishim Johnson with two picks, the first one again. A thing of beauty. Utah with some momentum at the end of the first half. Uh, they settled down to a certain extent, started to get the defense in the game, and they had a nice drive at the end of the first half. 10 plays, 53 yards for a field goal to make it 21-6 to six at that point. Kyle Whittingham, and shoot, I respect when Kyle Whittingham talks, I listen and, yes, have all sorts of respect for the man we all do in college football. And he thought, and of course he's going to say this, but still, when he says something like this, you tend to believe it. He said, okay, yes, they punched us in the mouth. This is a big paraphrase here. I don't remember exactly word for word what he said. Basically, Oregon came out strong. We didn't play well. We are ready to go now. We've settled down. A field goal is not going to do it, though. A field goal is not going to beat this team. we got to score touchdowns, but we are ready to go. Game on. That's what he said. And I believe that he believes that because he believes in his team and his program and his system. And usually when he says something like that, it means game on. But no game on in this one. And consider at Rice Eccles Stadium, Utah had won 18 consecutive games. The last time Oregon won there was in 2016. This is a difficult, difficult place to win. Right out of the gate, Oregon takes control again. Uh, much like the game at Colorado, and Utah's a better team than Colorado. And the Ducks, of course, had that game at home against the Buffs. And really just that was never a game. They blasted them 35-0 at half. But similar to that... They just shut it off. Boom. Just didn't even allow uh, the other team to come back. And in this one, two immediate touchdowns right out of the gate after intermission. 76 and 52 yards. The second one, 52-yard drive after another Tysheem Johnson interception. The last three, three drives of the game for Oregon, it did not matter. They only had three only for them, 390 yards of total offense. But that's what they needed. Bo Nix hit on 24 of 31. 248 yards, two touchdowns, no picks in his 55th career start. That's an all-time record in college football, not just for a quarterback, for any player, 55 starts. And he only threw, when it counted, meaningful drives when the game was still in doubt, two incompletions in the first six drives of the game for Bo Nix. He has had his detractors and critics and haters through the years, but he has proven to be a capable shoot capable. What are you talking about, Mark? Really a great college quarterback is what he is right now. And he's played himself in a position to be a Heisman candidate and a possible finalist. And who knows if Oregon can, can, can continue on from here, 
maybe more. Bucky Irving, he supplies the running offense or the bulk of it, and he's a tough runner, did have the early fumble, but man, Bucky Irving is impressive. They obviously don't need him in Minnesota. <laughs> they trot out a different running back every week and gain 100 yards, but that's another deal. Rush defense for Oregon, and think about this. The Oregon football team was a top 15 team last year. 10-3, and three, won a bowl game over North Carolina. The defense was a mess, especially against the pass. Inconsistent pass rush. The secondary was a mess. Man, different defense this year. Dan Lanning fixed things, much like Brent Venables, after an awful first-year defense under a defensive guru. Lanning has it going with the Ducks this year. Held Utah. The bread and butter for Utah, of course, is running the football, especially with a backup quarterback. 36 attempts rushing, 99 yards, 2.8 yards per carry, six tackles for loss for the Ducks. Let's talk about the Washington game real quick because Oregon came into this game with no margin for error in terms of a college football playoff appearance. This team went to U went to Washington. They had a number of Fourth down decisions by their coach, some questionable decisions there. Even leaving those alone, they missed opportunities all over the place. They went for it and failed. They hit a field goal at the gun, a 43-yarder that would have tied the game, sent it into overtime. They went to the one of the tougher places to play, Husky Stadium in Seattle, and they walked away with a toss-up game. They walked away with a field goal loss in a toss-up game against a top 5-10 to 10 team in the nation. The AP poll sucks. It is ridiculous. Why in the world would this team drop after that? In my rankings, that performance at Washington actually validated how good Oregon is. When you go on the road and you have that many things go against you and you lose your two cornerbacks in the second half, you have all those things go against you, and it comes down to the last play of the game, you virtually played a tie on a missed field goal, and you drop in the rankings? How moronic. How stupid are these people? It confirmed how good Oregon is. And this game did as well. They win 35-6. Okay, the Ducks at 7-1, and 4-1 and one in the Pac-12. They've got Cal coming up. For Utah, uh, still can play for a Pac-12 championship game bid, but with two losses, you got to think they're out of the playoff bid. And it's been a tough go for Utah, and they've done rather well with Bryson Barnes at quarterback replacing Cam Rising, but it's just been too much to overcome. I don't know that they would have won this game with a healthy Cam Rising, but they have certainly been successful, and these two teams played a great game last year in Eugene. But uh, the Utes march on to an air, a game against Arizona State at 6-2 and two next week. Your thoughts about the Ducks and the Utes, especially Oregon football, Bo Nix, a Heisman contender, and a Pac-12 championship bid for Oregon in particular, right here at the Voice of College Football.